All right, well, the two most recent mass shootings in the United States have sparked continuing debate about the ways in which people are being radicalized online. According to research by the University of Maryland, more than 73% of the time, social media played a role in helping to radicalize people towards extremist ideologies in the U.S. in general. That's from a study from 2011 to 2016. Compare that to the previous five years where the number was just over 26%. To discuss, in Washington, we've got Michael Beckerman, CEO of the Internet Association, a tech lobbying group that includes Facebook, Twitter, and Google. And in studio, Bloomberg Sarah Fryer, who covers social media for us. So what do we know about this meeting at the White House scheduled for tomorrow? It's supposed to be a way to get the companies to come together to talk about how they're going to confront this idea of domestic terrorism. Now, the companies have had a system to deal with a sort of international Islamic terrorism for years, and they've really worked on developing a way to share that information about posts that go up, videos that go up, and then able, they're able to quickly take it down across all of the participating companies. And so it would be really interesting if they come to ki some kind of conclusion like that. The flip side is the White House has also been on the company's case about anti-conservative bias and a lot of the rhetoric of, uh, you know, the, the white nationalism, et cetera, has some ties to that kind of rhetoric too. And the worry is that they will end up, you know, censoring things. Now, Michael, you're actually going to this meeting and there's been a lot of debate, especially in light of these two recent shootings about you know, online violence, but also the availability of guns, racism, you know, a lot of different issues at play. What's the argument that, that you and that these companies plan to make? So these are horrific crimes that happen in the offline world, but our companies are committed to do an oversized role on the internet to help take down um, extremist content and hate, take down hate speech um, and work with people within communities and work with law enforcement um, to help ensure that these things don't happen. But as you mentioned, um, you know, crimes like this have happened before the internet. Um, if you look at global statistics, um, the United States ranks number 15 in social media penetration, but um, I think we all know where we rank in mass shootings. Um, but we we're happy to be part of the solution and have a constructive conversation with the White House tomorrow. Now, uh, several Internet companies have gotten together to form an on, a, a coalition to fight terror online, but there's a lot of question about how productive this coalition has been. Take a listen to Congressman R Max Rose uh, questioning these companies after the Christchurch shootings. This is what he had to say about that coalition. I'm getting to the fact that you're not taking it seriously because there were no pub, there's no public building, there's no full-time staff, there were no public POCs until after the Christchurch shooting. Well, I think That's what I'm speaking to. How, are, how is anyone supposed to think that you all take this collective action problem seriously if you have no one working on it full-time? This is not something that technology alone can solve. This is a problem that we are blaming the entire industry for, rightfully so. Michael, is this coalition actually making progress? Yes, yes. Um, our companies um, have worked incredibly hard, both independently amongst themselves and with uh, law enforcement and national security agencies around the world um, to help fight terrorism and help fight um, extremism and, and all these other terrible things that have been existing in our society for a very long time. I'm proud of the work they've done. Um, the congressman, I think, is, is a little bit off base in some of his accusations there. And the work that these companies have done, uh, both collectively, independently, proactively, has made a huge difference both here in the United States and around the world. Sarah. The problem is that companies haven't agreed on a definition for what kind of content constitutes this white supremacist, white nationalist extremism, and that would actually be dangerous to take down. I guess I'm curious what the what the conclusion is about how they'll work together in the future. Mm -hmm. Facebook talked to me about how they took down things after the fact. You know, when the manifesto went up, they were able to scrub that from platforms. But anything proactive they can do? Right. And, and, yeah. and that's certainly the question a lot of folks are asking. Michael, look, you've got the, D the DOJ we just reported now looking into Google's ad business. The DOJ, a broad antitrust review into big tech in general. The FTC investigating Facebook. Criticism from the president. Criticism from lawmakers on both sides of the aisle. These mass shootings. What's your job like in Washington these days? Well, look, our companies certainly are under scrutiny. Um, and 
I don't think they get um, the recognition and the credit um, that they deserve in some of these cases. Are they perfect? No. Can they do better? Absolutely. But these are things that are major problems and huge complicated questions that we have in our society as a whole. And uh, the companies are doing what they can to tackle them. But some of these things, as Sarah uh, pointed out, is a great point. A lot of the speech and a lot of the content that um, that people are trying to post to the internet and, and talk about every single day is, is First Amendment protected speech. Each platform has a different set of community standards. I think it's perfectly uh, reasonable and, and right in, in these circumstances for companies to say, we don't want uh, white supremacists, we don't want hate speech on our platform, and we're going to take it down. There are many that don't agree with that. Um, there's many in Congress and elsewhere who have said that the companies should um, not take that down and should just you know, put their hands up. But I, I, think, I think it's perfectly reasonable for a company to have community guidelines and community standards that clearly state that um, hate speech and white supremacists and all of these kind of violent content um, that people are talking about are removed from our platform and doesn't have a place on our platform. That's not the case with everybody. When you look at our members, um, they're good actors. They're working to solve a lot of these very complicated and difficult issues we have. But there are many bad actors out there. You hear about 8chan and some of these other right. uh, fringe websites that have a very different perspective on it. The question is, where do you draw the line, a dark line? Okay, Michael Beckman of the Internet Association, good to have you back here. Uh, we'll check in with you after that meeting at the White House and our own Sarah Fryer. Thank you.